Welcome to part two of this here travel vlog. This time I'm going to be talking about Tokyo, the second leg of my trip. Um, when I first got there, I was confused as all hell. I didn't know where the hell to go. I didn't know how to get to the city. I asked, um, I went outside the airport, asked a cab driver, didn't speak much English. He told me it would be about $300 from the airport. So that was, that was not going to happen. So I went, had to go find the transit, all that type of stuff, uh, figure out how to get into the city. Now that I think back, it's easy. But at first, it was very intimidating. There's so many lines. There's 15 lines. There's 250 train stations. And it's just, it's, it's craziness. Um, and at first, it could be intimidating coming from Toronto, where we have three lines, two and a half kind of, and so I'm not used to seeing a transit map like that, and it just blew my freaking mind. I also didn't know how to pay, I didn't know how to use a turn, so that was, that was a little bit intimidating, a little bit frustrating at first, but uh, once I got to the city, everything was fine. The next day, I learned how to use the transit system very easily. There's little kiosks at every, at every station. You put in money, it gives you a ticket. You put the ticket in when you get on, you t put the ticket in when you get off, it's that easy. I ended up getting a Suica card, which is like a Metro Pass kind of thing that you tap, you, you put money on it, you tap, and it's that easy. Um, I was on a couple of those trains that you see on the internet where it's just completely rammed. Uh, it's uncomfortable, but it's actually very, like it wasn't bad at all. Um, and you could hear a goddamn pin drop in those situations too. It's, uh, it is silent because that would be disrespectful to be loud in someone else's space, so people are just silent on the train, which is, which is kind of nice. I thought it was very weird at first. Uh, nobody's even tapping their toe if they have their headset in. That's just the culture. It was very quiet, which I, I rather liked. It was also perfectly clean. All the seats, you didn't see any dust, you didn't see any dirt anywhere. Even the handrails everywhere, the train stops themselves, like on the platforms, completely clean. Everything's just clean. Um, which brings me to my second point, which is everything's clean. The streets are clean, the, the restaurants are clean, everything just is so clean. Um, you don't see garbage on the streets. I couldn't even find a garbage bin. I, I put my can in my bag because I saw someone else doing it because I, there's not really much access to garbages. But that's just what people do. They put them in the bag and bring it home, throw it out that way. There's uh, in some areas, you'll see more cigarette butts and that stuff, but in a lot of places, especially where I stayed in Shinjuku, you can't smoke on the sidewalk even. So that helps keep the air clean and the ground clean, which is nice. It's not ashy and there's not butts everywhere. Um, let's jump to the food. The food, loved it. Um, I was a bit more experimental than I normally am here. I had some uh, raw horse meat. That was pretty damn good. Um, a lot of tongue, a lot of like a lot of weird meats, that kind of thing. Had curry udon noodles, which I love, like thick ones. The thin ones I don't like so much. The cold udon, the thick curries. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, and I found it rather cheap. Um, you go out for a meal, you could expect to spend 700, 800 yen, which is about seven, eight bucks, and that's a full meal. Uh, versus here, you're talking 15 to 25 dollars for for that same type of uh, filling meal. Food's just cheaper. It's better prepared. You could taste its better cuts of meat. Um, I don't eat fish, so I didn't try the sushi. I didn't try all that type of stuff. But uh, the food that I did have, it was it was really really tasty. It was really good. Uh, most of the the beef and that kind of thing is made just a bit more cooked than blue, just a bit undercooked from rare, uh, and it's good, like that's how I love it, and it's just, it was very tasty. The spices on everything were really good. The service, um, I didn't know at first you had to call them over, I just kind of tried to do the eye contact thing that we do, that wasn't working. It's a custom thing that I had to get used to. You pay at the cash instead of the table, all that type of stuff, but still restaurants are in and out in 15 minutes. Um, half hour at the most if you're there with a bunch of people and it's just it's quick it's easy it's efficient the food is really good you could taste the quality um, I was never in a place that I thought was dirty and I went to some like wandering the streets go into a random restaurant very easy 
don't speak Japanese, of course. Uh, most places have poster boards outside with pictures of everything that they go in, so you know what you're going into. Uh, most menus also have the pictures, so you could just point to a thing on the menu. It's that easy. Some do have English, which helps if you want to determine what meat it is, but usually you could just look and determine, oh, that's that, that's that. Very easy, very simple. I never had a single problem when it came to the language. So let's talk about the language now. Uh, I speak English. A bit of Spanish, a minute amount of French, not Japanese. <laughs> uh, did not have a single problem there. Didn't have any instances where, um, where I felt held back because I didn't understand language. Everywhere there's English. On all signs there's English. Uh, in the trains even, they do the announcement, next stop is such and such, and it's connecting to such and such, and then they do it in English. Um, almost everything there is in English, and a lot of people do speak English, not well. A lot of the pronunciation is very different because we have sounds that they don't have, but they speak enough English that I never had a problem ordering food or finding my way around, going to stores, buying something. I never had a problem with anything, at the hotel especially. They spoke perfectly. I, I never had a single problem with the language because everybody, for some reason, like there's just English everywhere. That worked out well for me. Um, since we're talking about traveling around, the streets. It's very easy to get lost there, but it's very easy to find your way after you get lost. Um, because the streets aren't the way that we're used to here in Toronto where they're grid patterned. Um, they're kind of like, it's almost like there's a giant grid, but then within that grid is a swirly cluster. And once you get out of that cluster, it's like, okay, this is, this is the street I'm on, I can now find my way. But when you're in the cluster, sometimes it's easy to get lost or you see a store that you want to go back to and you can't find it. You could wander around for hours and not find it because that's just the way that it is. Um, but I always was able to find my way. I was able to know what stores all these things were. Um, I was wandering the streets at like 4 or 5 in the morning, 3, 4, whatever time, in the morning when Norse, most people should not be out. Um, didn't feel unsafe at all. Didn't have a single problem. Everything is lit up, like a lot of light pollution, that kind of thing. But um, didn't feel unsafe, didn't feel like there's shady characters around, didn't feel any of that. Um, and I was in a place that's known as the red light district or the place where the Yakuza hang out or that type of stuff. Didn't see a single thing, didn't have a single problem there. Um, again, English everywhere to find my place. Plus, if I really, if I really got lost, like, because there's times when I went to just a random train stop, walked around just because I wanted to know what was around there, and... Google Maps helps you out quite a bit, points you in the right direction anyway, so it's, it's impossible to get lost there. Um, all around, it was an amazing trip. Uh, I wish I'd spent more than eight days there, um, but I did only spend eight days there. Went up to Mount Fuji as well. But gorgeous. Like That's one thing about Tokyo. Inside the city, it's a city. It is a crammed together. Uh, everything is smaller. There's signs lighting up everything. The, the hotel rooms and just all the apartments that you see, everything is small and compact and tight. Um, but once you leave the actual core of the city, it's just beautiful landscapes everywhere. Um, it is a very, very beautiful country. Um, of course, the types of buildings that we don't have here with the, with the shingly type roofs, uh, like the, the clay shingles. Uh, a lot of solar panels once you leave the city as well. They're very, sol they're very solar conscious, they're very energy conscious. Um, I just, I, I, I don't know. I, I had a great time there. Um, uh, it was just good. It was good. It makes, me, it makes me wish I didn't stay four days in Vancouver, that I had gone straight to, uh, to Tokyo, spent the extra days there. Um, or just or just made it a longer trip, that kind of thing. Um, again, I looked into real estate because that's what I do when I'm places. I look into to not to say real estate, but renting and that kind of thing. Just see what what property values are. Um, I found them to be on par with Toronto for the most part for a one bedroom or like a bachelor kind of thing. You're looking at about seven hundred dollars a month, um, seventy thousand yen. Um, for a two-bedroom, the, like the, for, for some of the size I'm used to, it doesn't exist there. 
Um, I mean, I have 900 square feet in a two bedroom. It doesn't exist there. Uh, two bedroom there, you're probably looking at like 600 square feet, something like that. But again, the, the pricing is, is, it reflects that where you're looking at about maybe 13, 1400 a month um, for something that big for a two bedroom. Um, it's not it's not as expensive as uh, as other places are as as Vancouver was. Uh, it's pretty much on par with Toronto. Um, the price of goods, the price of everything. I found food to be significantly cheaper, uh, especially eating out that kind of thing. Um, certain things were more expensive, uh, gadgets, all that type of stuff. For some reason, computers, um, cameras, like all all the toys and that kind of thing were significantly expensive. Uh, anime characters, um, like if you want the figures and stuff, very expensive. But if you want the, the anime books, they're two, three bucks. Like they're a lot cheaper than they are here. So, so it's give and take with the pricing, uh, depending on what you're into, depending on what you need. Um, fruits and vegetables, or mainly fruits, are disgustingly expensive. You pay like a dollar an apple, a couple dollars for a banana, like because they're importing most of that in. And, and it goes through rigorous, um, rigorous different checks and everything. You'll pay $15 for a watermelon that's this big because they don't have our size watermelons. Um, so for fruits and stuff, you will pay more. Um, but for meats and stuff, you'll pay less. Um, so it's, it's kind of the trade-off, and it works well for me. Um, nuts and stuff, again, you'll probably pay more versus chocolate. You'll pay almost nothing for. You can get snacks for, like, nine cents stuff like that like it, you can find some really cheap stuff and it's really good um yeah i mean it was just it was just a really good trip i definitely recommend tokyo uh to anyone that likes traveling or anyone that just wants to go see another culture or wants to to see beauty and respect and and all that type of stuff um tokyo is definitely definitely the place to go i had a great time um I never had a bad experience there. I never had a bad, bad experience anywhere I went there, and it was just, uh, yeah, Tokyo. You should go there. Not a cheap flight, but you should go there.